Hello and welcome back to another video in the world of Monster Hunter and this is all about the Nogagante weapon trap and this is going to be largely my opinion as well as a little bit of well just research involved and just generally end game builds variable even progression game build variable and that is basically Nergagante weapons are they even actually worth it now a lot of people that I've actually come across that are progressing through the game a lot of them use Nergagante weapons for two reasons first reason being and I actually agree with this is they look bloody cool now if that is your reasoning as to why you use them you don't care whether they're good or bad or how they perform you just simply use them because they look cool that is absolutely fine I don't want to take that away from you however there are a lot of people out there that genuinely believe that Nergigante weapons are the best in slot I have come across so many people that use Desolation Claws the dual blades from Nergigante claiming that they are the best dual blades in the game they are far far from it like so far from it it's unreal so this is sort of meant to be like a little bit of it's not meant to like break people or like you know tell them and say oh what you're using is terrible it's meant to be more educational of no Gante weapons aren't the best in the game if you're using them thinking they're the best and you're wanting to go down the meta route I'm going to be in this video suggesting other craftable weapons that are going to be better for you in that sense however there are a few exceptions with every rule including Nogagante's weapons and hopefully what I'm going to do here is enlighten a few people as well as suggest a better path if you're wanting to go down that particular path if you're not then well if you're just going for looks it doesn't really matter I mean technically speaking every monster in the game can be done with every weapon in the game it's just a matter of whether you feel you are being optimal or whether others believe you are being optimal uh, but I would argue the only two monsters in the entire game where you do need to try and go for pure optimal builds would be Ancient Leshen and Extreme Behemoth other than that there's no well there is a point but it's not a required point they would be the only two that I would say are a required point so Logo Gun 2 weapons, why is it that I actually do not rate them at all? Well, it is quite simple. They don't come under the effect of handicraft. For example, as you look at their sharpness here, they are maxed out on their sharpness. You can't do anything. Purgatory's Atrocity, honestly, Jagras Hacker 3, add in a decent build. And elementless and you're gonna do more damage same with the great Weverian jaw blade now on the build I am currently using I have three elements so you're gonna to have to ignore the element and just trust me when I tell you it's hidden but the great Weverian jaw blade although it says that there's blast active there it's not active so yet again you can add in elementless and it will probably do more damage it is very very effective and to be honest, yes, again, it looks cool, but it's not going to be the best. I believe the longsword is one of the ones that suffers the worst. Exterminations Edge. Stats-wise, it looks okay, but if you just go into the Divine Slasher, if needed, and add Elementless, you're going to be doing so much better. Including, as well, Reaver Calamity, which is considered to be one of the best endgame longswords going as well which is absolutely broken and I have even heard that a lot of people prefer to use Empress Sword Sticks just because it just outperforms it. For Sword and Shield, I actually believe that the Eradication's Vanguard is one of the worst Sword and Shields in the game and I, I can't really say whether it is, but when it gets outdone by things like the Rathian, the Radaban and the Baroth, sword and shield mathematically speaking I could kind of believe it particularly the Baroth one that, that used to be one of the best meta 
Sword and Steel was in the game until closer, more up-to-date updates came into play. And then just again, looking at the Devil Joe weapon, it's just... You know, it's like looking at Susan Boyle and then going Kay Beckinsale. You know, it's just absolutely stupid. A lot of people do use the Witcher Swords as well, just for the novelty, but even these are still better. Dual Blade, again, I get why people use them. They do look cool as hell. They look absolutely amazing, but particularly for general purpose or even just Dragon Dual Blades, Wrathful Predation, they're going to be oh so much better. Even on a non-crit, they will still out damage Desolation's Claws. That's how broken these weapons are. And as for a raw dual blade, you would want to go for Zerial and Empress Dagger Sticks are also there for a general purpose if needed. Hammer, honestly, I, I don't even know why I'm going into this because I don't really see too many people using this weapon. But why would you when you've got this? Diablo Shatterer 2. This weapon, even if you added in every other weapon class in the game, this weapon just outperforms all of them. It's broken as hell. Hunting Horn, we'll get into a bit later. Lance, I've seen a lot of people use this, and this is probably the one weapon where I would say you're not using it for looks. It looks hor horrendous, pig, absolutely terrible. But then you've got the Garandara 2. You've also got the lunar sticks again as well both outperform the Nergagante lance spectacularly which is uh, quite funny gun lance is a bit of a funny one because you're not really looking at the main stats you're looking more at the wide level two so anything that has a higher level will outperform it trying to focus in on the wide ones but anything that's got wide level three or four will just generally outperform it because the shelling from gun lance is flat damage if it deals 50 it will always deal 50 it doesn't depend on hit zone values so having a higher level of shelling basically means higher level of damage for the switch axe again this is like another clear-cut one i've seen a lot of people actually using dying light but both Axe of Demons from Diablos and Terra Tyrannus from Devil Joe will, it's not even a spanking, it's like absolutely annihilating it in terms of performance. There's literally no point in using it in comparison to those. And again, it's the same with the Charge Lays, Desolation's Thorns. This is actually one of the least cooler weapons, I feel, coming from Nogagante, but in terms of raw output, Diablos Tyrannus 2, really, and it gives you a defense bonus. It's just <clears throat> pointless. The Empress Alma Ruin is a very close second to Diablos, but even then compared to Desolation Fawns, it just completely decimates it in terms of damage. For the Insect Glade, this is a weird one, Catastrophe's Light is okay but the only reason you would grind this out to get catastrophes light being an insect glaive player technically speaking is to grind out grunstorm simply because devil joe is weak to dragon it's got a decent balance of stats but the moment you get grunstorm you performance wise mathematically speaking there's no point using it and then finally we have the bow. Now I don't really see too many people using this, but when I do they're normally dead. Simply because, well, for a dragon bow, the Hazak Velos is going to outperform it in so many, so many different ways. And then in terms of the best craftable dragon bow, the Dragon Bone Bow 3, oh, a mouthful, is technically speaking the best dragon bow in the of the game so Hazak Velos and Dragon Bone Bow 3 they're the ones you're going to want to go for now we're going to go into the little catches here and that is the hunting horn and we're not looking at the stats per se of the hunting horn it's more the songs particularly while learning hunting horn health recovery small is quite handy 
affinity up and health recovery small is actually very handy particularly because as we all know at this point affinity is basically the be all and end all in the game at the moment affinity just means so much more damage and not a lot of people are going to have the decorations to or the builds to put the affinity in when this hunting horn can just do it for you and earplugs oh my god amazing because you know earplugs as an upgrade to that you also do have the Luna Nergi hunting horn the ruined one slightly higher damage along with blast which makes it more compatible for general play exact same songs however when you start getting into a bit more of the attack hunting horn rather than the uh, learning hunting horn things like deep vero and when you get to call Draroth, the Taroth Pipe Sleep are going to come into play, as well as the Lunar Blaze Hunting Horn, which is going to be a very, very prominent role in your hunting hornness. You've then got Cataclysm Trigger, which is going to be a spread three light bow gun. Now, this isn't inherently bad, it's actually pretty darn good. I just prefer the Durototus one for my own personal reasons. And if you're wanting to go for absolute maxi damage on your spread three light bow gun, again, there's a pattern here, you're gonna want to go for the Devil Joe light bow gun, Devil's Madness. The flip side to this being is you're also going to want to be using an affinity booster because you're unable to maximize the damage as well as the affinity. You can kind of pick one or the other, but being that there's not a damage booster, only an affinity booster, guess what you're gonna go for? Destructions Fusillade. Now this one is actually quite conflicting being a heavy bowgun. I am a heavy bowgun main, near enough at 1,900 hunts with just heavy bowgun. And again, this is a spread three heavy bowgun, but I hated this damn thing. Due to the small magazine and the okay damage output, it just felt so much more sluggish and slow than a heavy bowgun typically feels. However, until you get Tariff Assault Glutton, this is basically your best bet for a spread heavy bowgun. Personally, I prefer the Gluttonous Fan Cannon from Great Jagras or the Legiana Shattercris for your Pierce. So basically, if you're trying to be optimal, Nergigante weapons are pretty darn bad. If you're going for looks, Nergigante weapons are pretty darn good. But being that Iceborne is coming out and we don't know the difficulty level that this master rank is going to have i personally would state you try and get as optimal as you can for the moment at least with one weapon just so that you are in a decent standing with that weapon and depending on how it goes you can then adjust and adapt from there so in the meantime that's me thank you very much for watching i hope you guys have learned something and good luck, have fun, and don't die. It's bad for the health.